Welcome everybody to today's virtual digital economy seminar. We are really starting to feel the competition. Uh, the CMA in the UK is presenting its report on competition and digital ads. As we speak, the NBR Summer Institute have started seen several other virtual workshops and seminars today. So uh, yeah, so there's uh, a lot going on. So uh, given that, it's, uh, it's a really big pleasure to see uh, still so many of you joining us and in particular for this final session for the summer. Our moderator today will be Chris Peukert at the ETH Zurich. And uh, as always, if you have any clarifying questions, please send this to Chris uh, in the chat window. He'll unmute you so you can ask the question directly to Chris, the speaker. And uh, we'll use the same channel to collect questions for the Q&A. Uh, also, I see some of you have the video activated. That's great. So to make this uh, session a bit more interactive, um, always feel free to keep your video turned on. And uh, uh, the session will be recorded, and we'll make it available on YouTube afterwards. So if you ask a question or have your video on, you might be on the recording. All right, so happy to hand over to Christian. So hello also from my side. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Chris Foreman at Cornell University. Um, Chris, again, as like um, any of our speakers, doesn't really need an introduction. Um, Chris has been uh, senior editor at Management Science. I think you still have a couple of days left in, in that position. Um, so you've, you've seen a lot of uh, great papers um, and you've also published, of course, a lot of great papers. You've worked a lot on um, uh, digitization and um, sort of offline versus online. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to today's talk about firm organization and digital age. Um, Chris, the floor is yours. Well, thanks so much, Christian. It's, it's a pleasure being here and, and wonderful to see so many uh, friends online. Hope everyone's doing well. And, and thanks to all of you guys. This has really been a great um, service that you've provided to the, to the community. I've, I've been to uh, a number of these sessions and they've really all been fantastic. So, so thank you. This has been great. So, um, so this is a paper with Christina McElhern at the University of Toronto. And uh, this paper is using data from the US Census Bureau microdata. And so I'm required to state that all of the results have been reviewed to ensure that no confidential information has been uh, disclosed. So the research question that we're gonna look at is how does firm organization change in responses to advances in information technology that reduce transaction costs. And so one of the motivations for why we should care about this is the well-documented heterogeneity and productivity and firm performance that's been documented by, for example, Chad Severson and, and others um, in particular is relevant to this paper and to the seminar, there's been a great deal of documented heterogeneity in uh, the returns to information technology. Um, one common framework that's often been used to explain heterogeneity and the returns to IT investment has been that of uh, complementarities. And this idea that the returns to some practices are likely to be higher in the presence of others. And I think um, in this seminar, Lynn Wu actually um, spoke to this a couple of weeks back in, in her paper uh, looking at uh, robots and, and management within uh, organizations. And so um, in some ways, this paper is gonna look along the same line of work looking at IT and, and firm structure. And so broadly, the question is which ingredients um, need to go together. Need to go together, and what's the, you know, in some sense, what's the integrated system of IT and organizations in which we can, um, you know, which firms will get some of the greatest benefits from their IT investments. Another way of thinking about this is um, a number of years back, the Economist ran an obituary on uh, Ronald Coase. And so um, one of the lines in that article was um, the theory of the firm would suggest that firms ought to be in retreat because technology is lowering transaction costs. And why go to the bother of organizing things under one roof 
when the internet will lower the, the cost of going to the, the market. In some ways, um, at a very intuitive level, um, this paper is gonna look at a, a version of that particular question. And so one of the challenges of answering or researching this question has been historically been one of data, both measurement in the dependent variable and, and sort of the key independent var variable, if you will. Um, historically, it's been comparatively hard to measure vertical integration. And it's also hard to um, find measures of IT use that, um, that um, would influence behavior in the precise margin that we're interested in, i.e. IT that lowers external coordination costs between firms versus internal coordination costs within firms. And so really we're gonna use the census data to in some sense relax the data constraint. Um, in particular, we're going to use a plant level measure of the extent to which downstream value chain activities are performed elsewhere in the firm. And I'm gonna explain a bit more about this measure of vertical integration in a couple of minutes, because it's, it's a, perhaps in some ways a bit different than what's been seen elsewhere. Um, and we're also going to use a plant level measure of IT use um, that uh, allows us to precisely measure things that are going to influence internal um, versus external uh, coordination costs. And so the data that we're gonna use is perhaps a, um, a, a little bit older. Um, we're gonna look at um, changes in firm boundaries between 1992 and 2002 around the diffusion of the commercial internet. And the reason why we focus on that time period is it's, it's a good time to observe a, a discontinuous change if you will, to information processing and communica communication costs. And so, you know, we can use that to look at um, how plants that do a mix of internal and external exchange change that mix along with changes in IT use. And so I know there's a, a lot um, embedded within that statement. And as I said, I'll, um, I'll clarify things um, a little bit in, in a couple of minutes. And so the, the punchline is um, downstream within firm activity declines more in plants with significant, what we call external IT or information technology that lowers the costs of external coordination. And so rather than um, looking at the traditional make or buy decision, the dependent variable that we're gonna look at is the share of total plant production that's sold to other plants within the same firm, or what we're gonna call the internal transaction ratio. And essentially the sort of baseline result is that a one standard deviation increase in using the internet for external coordination is associated with about an 8% decline um, in this ratio. And of course, you know, in any sort of exercise like this, um, we're gonna have to worry a lot about uh, causality. And so we'll do a variety of different things and, and perhaps um, uh, you folks will have some other suggestions of other things that we should be thinking about as well. One of the advantages we think of a framework such as this, of looking at vertical integration at the plant level rather than at the firm level is it allows us to examine the circumstances around which um, our results are most salient. And so in particular, the effect, what we're gonna show is the effects are gonna be strongest among plants whose outputs are integral to production elsewhere in the firm and among plants that are capacity constrained. And we're also gonna explore differences um, based on the nature of IT use and show that dynamic coordination is um, more important than static information sharing. And we'll, we'll say a bit more why that is in a, in a few minutes. And also 
uh, IT investments that uh, help manage or augment um, the shop floor is going to complement external IT as, as it result uh, applies to these particular sets of results. And so, you know, the way we think about this, this paper is there's been a uh, longstanding interest in both economics and information systems on the implications of IT for, for firm structure. Um, historically, a lot of the focus has been looking at asset ownership, however, rather than transaction flows. So um, there's been some excellent prior work that's looked at how, for example, uh, generic capital or total capital spending in IT um, influences the mix of asset ownership within the firm. We're going to differ from some of this prior work in a couple of ways. One is, as I said, we're going to look at transaction flows rather than asset ownership. The second is that um, we're going to be able to unpack the effects of IT investment to be able to separate the effects on internal versus external coordination costs to allow us greater resolution on when IT investments are likely to lead to a change in, in vertical integration. So um, that was just the introduction. I'm gonna kind of get into the meat of the paper and uh, next, I'll just stop real quickly in case there's any um, quick questions so far. So at the moment, we don't have any questions. Okay, great. So as I said, the, um, the data that we're gonna use is from the US Census Annual Survey of Manufacturers. Um, and we're gonna combine this with a one-time survey that the census did on computer use within manufacturing plants. Now, um, one of the things to realize about this particular sample is we're, we're gonna condition a lot of our results on the set of plants for whom the decision that we analyze is going to be, uh, is most likely to be relevant. So for example, if you think about um, plants that are shipping to end consumers, this decision about whether you sell output within the firm versus outside of the firm is going to be um, less relevant, say, than um, you know, some, uh, some plant that's in the middle of the production chain. Um, also, it's not going to be very relevant for single establishment firms. And so um, while we take the, the set of plants that are within the ASM, which is a relatively large set of plants, we're going to um, focus on 5,600 plants that tend to be fairly large. The mean total value shipment of these plants in the sample is about 159.5 million in 2002. So these are relatively large plants within large firms. Um, and the, um, the dependent variable that we're gonna look at is, as I suggested before, this internal transaction ratio that has a mean of 12.2% in, 2000, in 2002. So that's the mean of um, output shipped to other plants within the same firm divided by um, the total, uh, total value of shipments from that plant. And so some of the, the measures that um, we're gonna use are a little bit um, non-standard. And so I, you know, now after talking about the data a little bit, I wanna spend a bit of time explaining what we mean by vertical integration within this context. So if you think about, you know, when we often think about vertical integration, we often think about this idea of make or buy, right? So do um, our firm's inputs uh, acquired internally versus externally? So this is a sort of simplified diagram that shows um, the mix of um, plants within a firm. And so plant one and plant two are um, both establishments within the same firm and plant three and plant four are um, outside of the firm. And so most work in this area has 
historically looked at um, whether plant two, um, you know, would source its inputs from plant one or plant four. We're gonna, in some sense, look at the dual of this question and look at, um, instead of that, we're gonna look at whether plant one ships its um, outputs to plant two or to plant three in essence. And so, um, you know, of course that decision is embedded within a much larger network of transactions. For example, within the context of this example that I gave, um, plant, uh, plant one and plant two might be embedded within a larger firm that also includes plant four, which sends, sells to end consumers. As I suggested before, we're gonna drop these plants for the purpose of our analysis. But of course we don't, you know, although the data that we have are quite rich, we're actually not gonna observe um, that whole, this whole production chain of activities. Rather, most of what we observe is um, basically whether the focal plant selling product A sells its output within the firm or outside the firm. And we call this the internal transaction ratio. And so what we're gonna look at is essentially the ratio of the red and the blue arrows basically. And so um, very usefully, um, the Census Bureau asks a question in the annual survey of manufacturers about whether the market value of products um, is shipped you know, to other plants within your company, as well as the total value of shipments at the, at the plant level. And so um, I'm not able to show you the distribution of this variable because of disclosure restrictions, but conceptually what's going on is that there's a mass of plants at zero that aren't shipping any output internally, a mass of plants at one, um, that ship all of their output internally. But actually, interestingly, in, in something that I think we, we sometimes don't appreciate, um, a, lot of, um, a lot of plants ship a mix of um, their output within the firm and versus outside the firm. So there's actually a, a mix of transactions in that particular variable. And that's the, the group of plants that um, are often you know, gonna be particularly relevant for this analysis. Chris, uh, we have a question. Hannes, okay. Hannes actually has a question. I, th I think you might be muted, Hannes. So now, <laughs> sorry. <Okay. laughs> um, quick uh, uh, question. On that uh, question uh, by the census, it says domestic plants. So what about, I mean, are in international firms relevant? And uh, so, you know, sales to international plants, is that a, an important part? Un unfortunately, um, this particular survey doesn't, um, doesn't record international transactions. That would be a separate, um, a separate survey um, that we don't have access to. And so, um, Essentially, what we're, we're I mean, there are there is value of products exported, so we don't have that. Um, but what we're going to be looking at are um, the market value of shipments um, in um, in total to the market value of products shipped to other domestic plants. And so um, you're right; there there are likely to be some. There could be some. Um, shipments in um, uh, to international plants that then in turn come back or don't come back to the US. Unfortunately, there's no way to identify that from this particular survey. All right, thanks. Yep. So that was, a, yeah, that, that was a good catch on the, on the slide. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was excellent, thank you. So if you think about um, what's going to shape changes in the internal transaction ratio, um, so several things. One is you can imagine plant one increasing its output, and that increased output could go externally to an existing plant, such as 
plant three selling product B, or it could ship to new plants, such as plant four selling product B. Or you can imagine a reallocation of output from within the firm to outside of the firm, from plant two to plant three. And so these are all things that, um, you know, these are all different ways that we could observe changes in this internal transaction ratio. So what's gonna shape these changes in the internal transaction ratio? In other words, what affects the vertical integration of commodity flows? Well, the degree of the internal transaction ratio prior work suggests is gonna depend upon the relative costs of external versus internal uh, market exchange. And so we're gonna emphasize factors that um, are sensitive and may change as a result of IT investments in our setting. So for example, incentive problems in supply chains, coordination costs, transaction and ordering costs. Um, these are all things that can be influenced, potentially be influenced by information technology and can influence the relative costs of internal and ex versus external market exchange and so can influence our um, dependent variable. One of the nice things is that, you know, historically, we often think about how generic IT, i.e. total uh, capital investment can influence um, both internal and external market exchange. One of the nice things that we're able to do um, using these data is that uh, we're able to observe um, specific changes in uh, applications that are meant to um, uh, capture changes in information sharing both within and outside the firm. So for example, there's this question here that asks for each of the following items, to whom does the plant provide information to design specifications, demand project projections, production schedules, so forth and so on. And so we can observe whether the plant is sharing those to um, other company units or to external customers and external um, suppliers. And so um, that's gonna be the key sort of independent variable that we're gonna use um, in this analysis. Okay. Just, uh, I'll stop there in case there's any, uh, there may be any other questions. So far, no other questions. Okay, great. Sorry, I have a question actually. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, so, so also here on the question, it says whether they shared these uh, items online. So is the counterfactual that they shared them offline otherwise or didn't share them at all? No, no, so this is an excellent, um, this is an excellent question that I forgot to, to mention. So um, the, um, variable measures whether they're providing them online. And there's a separate question that measures um, whether the plant has adopted the internet. And so this is a measure of whether they're adopting um, internet-based um, information sharing um, rather than, you know, there may be um, historical ways of sharing this information that were enabled through other means. So over this time period, um, some of this information might have been shared by through proprietary networks, such as electronic data interchange. Um, and so that's not included in our measure of information sharing, although in um, some analyses, we're gonna examine heterogeneity in, in the um, results based upon whether um, whether the plant is engaged in these other historical kinds of information sharing. Okay, so um, as I alluded to the, um, you know, the, the novelty of the paper is essentially in the data, the empirical approach is really quite straightforward. Um, we're gonna regress the internal transaction ratio on um, measures of external IT, um, a measure of time varying establishment and, and some firm controls 
and plant and time fixed effects, um, most of the analyses are going to be just straight OLS, although we're mindful of the potential nonlinearity here and um, and so we'll look at robustness to some other things to some other nonlinear estimators. Um, we're going to estimate this over two periods simply because the the data were only collected on IT use at one one period of time in, in 1999. And so you know we'll also include a variety of different um, controls for other kinds of internally focused IT, generic IT, capital expenditure, um, some other things, um, as well as other plant level controls such as inventories, skill mix, downstream internal and external demand, um, the extent of local competition, um, and TFP and, and some other things as well. And so, um, as I hinted at before, these tend to be rather large, uh, rather large plants. Um, and um, yeah, and so we've already talked a little bit about the scale of the internal transaction ratio um, and the number of, uh, and the main independent variable is gonna be an index, essentially, and the mean of that index is, is 0.53. So I'll go into talking about the results now. Um, so internal uh, IT is associated with a decline in the um, internal transaction ratio. Um, the baseline results is um, column three here. And so to put this you know, in kind of meaningful terms, a one standard deviation increase and the external IT index, which is about three external uses, leads to um, an 8% decline in the internal transaction ratio. Remember, um, you know, we talked about um, you know, the mean of that in 2002 being about 12.2%. Um, we did explore um, kind of the impact of some of these other forms of IT, about whether there's something you know, sort of unique about external IT sharing. So for example, um, internal IT doesn't seem to have any impact on the, inter the internal transaction ratio. We think there could be a couple of different reasons for this. Um, one being that internal and external IT um, are correlated in part because having internal IT is an enabling technology for um, for external IT. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of difficult to partial out the effect of internal IT um, specifically. Um, through most of the results, we're going to focus um, the, uh, on the impact of external information sharing, although we will sort of explore the effect of internal information sharing and, and some other uh, regressions as well. One of the interesting things, so one thing to keep in mind is that um, there are, you know, so this is a ratio. And so the results for the ratio could um, be as a result of both changes in the numerator and denominator. And so one of the things is external IT um, leads to both a decline in internal transfers as well as an increase in. Uh, sales. So essentially, there's a decline in the numerator as well as an increase in the denominator that's pushing the ratio around. Right. So the so it's not the fact that, um, for example, firms are getting more productive and selling more output, and and so the decline in the ratio is just due to an increase in output um, while holding the internal sales um, constant, for example. Um, we also see some of the impacts of um, internal IT and, and production IT and generic IT. So generic IT capital spending, interestingly, leads to both an increase in sales as well as an increase in, um, in internal transfers. So 
so, um, you know, one of the things you might worry about in any exercise like this is obviously causality is a very big concern. We, you know, these results um, could be influenced by um, reverse causality or emitted variable bias. Um, in a couple minutes, I'm going to show a, a bunch of results that sort of characterize where the results are uh, most important. And to be honest, in a lot of ways, we think that this evidence of finding where the effects are strongest and where they're not and where they aren't is kind of the most um, con convincing part of our story that helps us to understand what might be driving our results. However, um, you know, while we're mindful of the limitations of doing this sort of thing, we, you know, we also do some IV analysis as well as a, a sort of timing falsification, um, as well as some things around functional form. And so essentially, um, what this table is basically showing, um, the first thing that we did was we looked at um, a year by year. So we converted our data from a two period model into a panel. And we looked to see um, whether the impact of external IT had any impact on the internal transaction ratio prior to the commercialization of, of the internet. So basically in 1993 and 1994. So a lot of times in these sort of, you know, diff and diff specifications, um, you know, well, you know, we often want to look at the pre-trend. It's impossible to look at pre-trends within this particular sample because it's a two-period model, but we can at least look at whether um, the effects of um, external IT show up prior to the commercialization of the internet, and they, they do not. Um, the other thing we can do is we can look at, um, you know, so another uh, question is this, um, the dependent variable is a ratio. And so we examine robustness to various nonlinear models, including um, a fractional probit model and a, and a Tobit model. So, you know, we're mindful of the, um, you know, I'm doing instrumental variables can only be one part of kind of the, the story and an analysis such as this, but we, we did explore um, three different IVs that, that we use. Um, one is based on the local cost of telecommunications services. So essentially how costly is it to deliver telecommunications services in the region, in the location where the plant is located. And the other thing we do is we, um, we look at instruments that um, would shape essentially the human capital investments in other linked establishments within the same firm to see how those might influence um, the decision to adopt or invest in uh, external IT. And so these are basically based upon um, firm level IT capabilities that lower the cost of adoption. So for example, the percentage of establishments in the same firm adopting computer-aided design or engineering. And we also have an instrument that is based on the competition and linked establishments. So we look to see whether um, the, you know, we basically look at adoption of external IT by competing firms in other locations where the firm has establishments the argument being that if there's competitors adopting in those other locations, that'll influence adoption in those other locations in the other establishments, but in turn, which will in turn influence adoption in the focal establishment. So Chris, to may I yes. interrupt? Um, so how about uh, internet speed and broadband accessibility on a local scale? Yes. Yeah, so on that. We could use that. So that was the idea of the first instrument, which is based on um, not speed, but based on the costs of delivering telecom services. So things like how dense is the population, um, how mountainous is the region, things of this nature. 
Um, we, we considered using speed data, but speed itself um, and access could also be potentially endogenous or correlated with um, omitted variables. And so we didn't, we didn't use, although we considered doing that, we, we decided not to use that as well. But that's mm -hmm. a great question. And something, something we talked about also. Yeah. Um, and so these are, I don't wanna, um, I only have a few minutes left. I don't wanna belabor the, um, the um, first stage, but essentially, um, you know, the result uh, in the first stage, the instruments behave um, more or less as, um, as expected. Um, the point estimates are directionally um, consistent, um, but larger than the um, OLS estimates. Um, this could be um, evidence of a local average treatment effect where compliers shift behavior more than other firms. Um, uh, so that, but they, they are they are a bit higher than than the the OLS estimates. Okay, so the, the last thing I want to talk about is the results depend upon you know so where the um, results are strongest depend upon plan and firm characteristics. So remember I alluded to um, we had a number of sample restrictions that um, are, ba are basically that we're restricting the baseline sample to plants for whom this decision to ship internally versus externally is likely to be most relevant. And so one of the things we do is we um, remove those restrictions. So essentially what the, and then we added them back in as dummy variables to see how that influenced the result. And so the first column here shows that when there's no sample restrictions, it essentially cuts the point estimate in half, um, which seems um, you know, sensible if you're including a bunch of establishments for whom this decision isn't relevant. Um, the other thing is we add, then we added back in these restrictions through dummy variables, essentially. Um, so the first one was, essentially whether the plant prior to the sample had done a mix of internal versus external transactions. That's column two. And column three, um, we, um, we did a, uh, an analysis where we identified whether the focal plant um, sold outputs that were likely to be used as inputs elsewhere in the firm. And so essentially what the results are showing is that um, you know, the, the decline in the internal transaction ratio only happens among these two subpopulations, either those that were doing a mix of internal or external transactions to begin with, or that were producing outputs that were used by other plants within the same firm. The other thing we did is we looked at um, plants that had um, capacity utilities that, that were close to their um, maximum plant capacity utilization. So essentially the results are strongest among plants that pre-sample were above 75% capacity utilization. And we think that one explanation for this might be is that if you're at um, capacity utilization and you decide to sell more of your output externally, um, then that involves a reallocation of output internally to externally in essence. In essence. And so that'll influence um, the numerator more and within our um, dependent variable. And so the results are uh, the results are stronger among those subsample of establishments. The last thing that we do is um, the results depend upon the nature of IT that we're looking at. And so one thing we look at is whether the IT facilitates dynamic or static coordination. So, um, you know, for example, um, dynamic coordination is, for example, sharing real-time production schedules. Static coordination is like sharing a catalog to partners. And so, as you might expect, the effect of dynamic coordination is, is stronger. Um, the other thing that, that we did, um, and this gets back to the point that, that Hannes had asked earlier, 
is we look to see um, whether the results are stronger or weaker based upon whether um, the plant had older types of information sharing like electronic data interchange. Um, and so, you know, with the hypothesis being that if you are able to share, um, you know, if you are already doing information sharing through these means, um, adopting external IT is likely to have less of an impact on uh, firm structure. And that, that seems to be the case. Um, we also looked at um, whether there was heterogeneity in the results based upon whether the firm had electronic um, you know, ERP systems um, and uh, production IT. And, and the results seem to suggest that the effects of external IT are stronger among plants that are re um, reorganizing their shop floor through um, production IT. And so, you know, one of the things that reassured us in these results is that they seem to be showing up where we would expect them to and not showing up where they shouldn't in a way that's kind of consistent with um, a theory that suggests uh, some reorganization of organizational structure as a result of adopting these forms of information technology. So um, just, to, just to close, um, I'm not gonna sort of belabor the, the point um, that much more. We, we sort of explore the effects of this external IT on vertical integration of downstream activities. Um, the results seem to depend a fair bit on plant and firm characteristics and the nature of IT. And so, you know, the, these sort of mundane, uh, cozy and transaction costs may matter a lot for firm organization. And um, it's another sort of, you know, piece of evidence that new technologies and their applications have implications that go beyond uh, productivity. So with that, I'll um, stop there and say thanks very much. Thanks very much, Chris. So we uh, don't have any questions at the moment. Um, so maybe people need some time to think about it. Um, while we wait for questions, um, I'll, I'll ask one. So um, I was thinking a little bit about the, uh, about the implications uh, of what we, you were discussing uh, in terms of sort of uh, industrial structure. So um, if, if your results show that um, having more of these externally focused IT uh, leads to um, basically firms uh, shipping more stuff to other firms, um, what does this imply for, for, for competition in an industry? What does this imply for sort of how products look like? Do products become more similar in an industry? Um, is, is that something you, you, could, you could look into? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if we've, we've thought as much about um, industrial um, structure. I, I think, um, you know, certainly we could, you know, so if, if you think about this, this question, um, you know, it's broadly um, embedded within kind of this idea of the reorganization of firms and moving, you know, as, as we talked, as I mentioned, kind of in that slide from The Economist about, you know, the emergence of potentially um, smaller, you know, so one, one potential implication for industrial structure would be that you might see smaller firms within um, an industry, um, more focused firms. Um, and so um, that could potentially be uh, one implication that um, that you might think about. I think there's a number of, you know, there's a lot of interesting questions about firm structure. We, you know, this particular paper took, you know, a relatively narrow view at looking at um, firm boundaries using one particular lens. Um, certainly there's questions about the scope of plants that you could think about, you know, what's the mix of activities that they're involved in, as, as you say, you know, if um, uh, if these um, you know if these results suggest the um, you know less need to um, be vertical, you know, so less 
vertical integration, if you will, it might lead to smaller firms and changes in, um, uh, in firm structure. Um, as I mentioned at the, earlier in the talk, you could also think about um, other measures of vertical integration as well, um, based more upon asset ownership or the mix of activities ongoing in firms. And so I think these are all sort of slices of this question that, um, that one could potentially look at. Yes, yes. Um, but of course then sort of, I guess if you were to uh, think more carefully about the implications, then of course the, the, the entire uh, endogeneity and causality question would also be uh, slightly more important. Okay, um, Hannes, I think you had a, okay. and a question. Yes. Um, so I was wondering, and, and I guess it's difficult to, to, to dig into that. Um, but so, I mean, can we conclude that things like outsourcing, so kind of the structure of the vertical chain is a uh, changing because of uh, increasing external IT use or should we interpret the result as, uh, there kind of, there's a broader set of customers that I can market my products to. So. You know, so by increasing external IT use, am I broadening my my market, my product market, or am I changing my my vertical production chain? I mean, I think I think it's probably a, a mix of of both of those. Honestly, I um, we I think we do believe this is a reorganization of the production chain. If you think about um, normally, when we think about that question, we think about um, make or buy rather than this sell in or sell out. But I, you know, they're they're quite closely related to one another, right? So if you're you know if you're the down if you're taking the perspective of the downstream plant, um, the downstream plant um, is making you know is has some input decision that's based upon the activities of the upstream plant and presumably the, you know, those, these decisions are um, uh, related with one, with one another and, um, and jointly determined, um, particularly as you go toward, uh, and I think that's easiest to see if you think about it within the context of a very simple production chain where you've got, for example, one upstream firm and one downstream firm you know, in that case, there's, there's a close mathematical relationship between sort of yeah. make or buy versus um, sell in or, or sell out. And so, um, so that's, that's one thing. I think one of the reasons why we wanted to look at sort of the numerator and denominator separately is the denominator of this thing um, is in part capturing um, uh, you know, total, you know, basically total shipments and the extent to which the firm is, um, you know, increasing its sales externally. Um, the fact that the numerator of this ratio is negative suggests that there is, you know, there is some reallocation, i.e. some reduction of transfers within the firm and some evidence that this particularly appeal appears to be the case within um, capacity constrained firms. I think one of the things that might be um, you know, interesting to potentially do that, that we haven't done so far is to look at, um, you know, for example, whether the increase in sales outside of the firm is more likely in more productive plants, harder to observe in these kinds of data, whether they're producing quote unquote better products, if you will, but, you know, you can imagine um, the shift in reallocation outside to other plants in other firms might be greater in um, more productive, um, you know, in more productive plants. Of course, these types of questions have um, broader implications for um, reallocation of output, but that's, you know, sort of another, another set of, another type of analysis entirely. But yeah, that's a long-winded way of saying um, we think there's a combination of um, changes in production chain, reallocation of activity, plus an increase in sales just externally from these more productive firms. Yes. 
Okay, so let's see if we have any more questions. Everybody's quiet and ready for the <laughs> summer break. <laughs> Okay, so if you don't have any, any more question, then uh, please join me in thanking Chris for this interesting presentation. Um, thanks for coming to the WIDE seminar. Uh, thanks for accepting the invitation, Chris. Thanks everyone for, uh, for participating. Um, we uh, have the plan to continue this, uh, but more on this uh, from Hannes. Uh, you could have closed this up as well. Uh, but yeah, so uh, thanks again also from my side. Uh, thank you very much, Chris, for coming uh, here today and presenting. It was a super interesting talk, I think, to, to end the, the, um, the, the spring series. Uh, and thanks again to, the, to our very faithful audience. Um, so we do plan to continue this series in the fall, and uh, probably we will restart on September 10th. Uh, and uh, on the same day and at the same time. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any uh, feedback or suggestions uh, about format, et cetera, and style, then uh, please do write us an email and uh, you can find an email, contact email on the website, on the Digital Economy uh, Group's website. Yeah, so everybody please have a good summer. <laughs>